how the other half of the legal profession survives. You know, we usually make appointments even down here. I don't like to crowd my clients. Oh, well, if I've selected an inconvenient time, why... Oh, no. Come in. Just that I don't make it a practice to keep them waiting. Not even the Honorable Thorne Fletcher. <laughs> you didn't keep me waiting, Press. I just got here. I'm very rigid about my office hours. The fact is, I finished a case yesterday. Got the defendant to settle out of court. But we... Did a little celebrating. Well, congratulations. Sit down. Thank you. How are you doing, Press? Oh, can't complain. Can't complain at all. Doing all right. Good. Of course, it takes time to build up confidence in a new area. Uh-huh. Mind if I call my service? Go right ahead. Actually, it's just a question of getting the right cases from now on. Yeah. Uh, this is Preston Morgan. May I have my calls? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Well, fine. Thank you. Cut the comedy, Press. I know you were at night court. I don't think you'd waste your time to come here and gloat what's on your mind. One of my clients is looking for a very particular young attorney to perform a very particular assignment. I think you're the man to do the job. I don't need any handouts, Mr. Fletcher. So if you'll excuse me, I'll get to my mail and my appointments get here. Press, I know you've been working night court for the past few months, and I know it doesn't pay enough to take care of you, much less your bills. Your rent, the payment on your secretarial and answering services are all past due. What, have you had me tailed? Oh, now look, Press, we're attorneys. We know how to find these things out. You don't have to prove yourself to me, Press. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think you were capable. Now, will you forget your pride and listen to me? Now, why come to me? What's wrong with all the gray flannel glorified law clerks in your esteemed firm? Once you hear the proposition, you'll know why. But I'm not at liberty to discuss it with you. Did you ever hear of, uh, Mrs. Leonora Spence? Of Spence Industries? The same. I don't get it. Why would the lady tycoon want to see me? Just listen to what she has to say. It'll only take a couple of hours, and no matter what you decide, you'll be well compensated for your time. Well, for clients who pay by the hour, I shave. Mm -hmm. 
No, absolutely not. The contracts read delivery on the 5th, and if delivery is not made, we will demand full penalty for each day lost. Harris, get me the B. Smith account. Prepare a balance sheet as of the last month and have it on my desk first thing in the morning. Send Mr. Fletcher and the other man in. Suspense? Morning, Fletcher. Is this the young man? Attorney Preston Morgan. Good morning, Mrs. Spence. Please be seated. How much does he know? Nothing. I've left everything to you. Mr. Fletcher's told me about the unfortunate affair with your former law partner, Tucker Whistler. But I'd like to hear your version, simply as you can state it. Well, there's not much to tell. Tucker Whistler had a reputation almost as big as Mr. Fletcher's. When I graduated from law school and he offered me a junior partnership, I naturally jumped at it. Then the Crime Commission hearings brought out that Tuck Whistler was the mouthpiece for the syndicate on the coast. We all read about this in the papers. The part that's hard to believe is his junior partner was the most surprised person in California. How do you explain this innocence? I guess a person's first instincts are to trust a friend, especially one who gave him his first big break. After all, a graduate from law school doesn't exactly expect a junior partnership right away. And you sort of put on mental blinders, see only what you want to see. I'll say this, Leonora. If the lawyer's committee hadn't been convinced this young man would have been disbarred along with his partner, he wouldn't be here today. I believe you. I accept Mr. Morgan. Uh, Mrs. Spence, since I'm the one to be commissioned, I think your acceptance of me is contingent upon my acceptance of your assignment. No cigar, Thorn. Yes? All right. Tomorrow. Uh, Eleven. No, Eleven thirty would be better. Hold all my calls. I like you, young man. Now, um, with your permission, I'd like to tell you my story. May I ask one thing? Yes. Why me? Why would you, Mrs. Leonora Spence, want an impoverished, almost desperate attorney at law? Because an impoverished, almost desperate attorney is the only one who would accept the assignment which I had to offer. Now may I proceed? Please. You have heard of the death of my son while driving his sports car. It was a month ago tomorrow. Robert. I had always hoped that eventually, after he'd had his fling, he would settle down, come home. Take his rightful place as the head of Spence Industries, the job he was born to fill. But unfortunately, my son was always susceptible to a certain kind of woman. Like the one he married? I don't know how she did it. Before I could intervene, she tricked Robert into marrying her. Maybe they were in love. Impossible. What would Robert have in common with a dancer, a nightclub dancer? From what I read in the newspaper gossip columns, your son seemed to have a preference for that kind of female companionship. Mr. Morgan, you will find me very democratic and open to discussion in all things. But as far as my son is concerned, that is a domain entirely apart. Now I want my grandson. I want to bring him up. I want to train him to fill his father's rightful place as head of Spence Industries. Where is this grandson? Robert lived in Acapulco. The mother and child have remained there. Has any effort been made to contact the mother? No, not yet. Well, why do you need me? I'm sure she'd jump at the chance to bring her son here. I don't think a nightclub dancer would have the proper influence on the education that I intend to give this child. But she is the mother of your grandchild. You can't change that fact. We can forget it. But why me, then? Can't Mr. Fletcher get in touch with the young mother? Well, we want to avoid possible adverse publicity. You see, I'm retained as attorney for Spence Industries. If I'd appear in Acapulco, the papers would put two and two together. 
I want you to bring me my grandson. But I still don't understand how you expect me to... Thorne, explain. Mrs. Spence is ready to settle $500,000 on the mother. However, she must agree to forfeit all right and claim to the child. Never attempt to contact him and never reveal the terms and conditions of the... Sale. That's what it is. You want me to buy your grandchild. Well? I'm sorry you've got the wrong boy. I'm just a hard-working slob who puts in hours at night court. You don't need me. You need a con man, an expert, someone who trades and barters in flesh. I do not appreciate sanctimonious platitudes, Mr. Morgan. As far as you are concerned, this is an assignment, a cold assignment. I told you it was a job for a somewhat desperate young man. If you refuse, I'm sure there are others. What if I don't refuse? The day you bring me my grandson, I will give you a check for $50,000. Before her marriage to Robert, Sabina and her twin sister Dara were a dance team. The Corwin sisters, they worked all the nightclubs, maybe you've seen them. Anyway, after the act broke up, the twin sister Dara even resorted to appearing in burlesque. So, for all we know, the mother of my grandchild may be entirely pleased with the deal I offer her. Gracias, señor. El cuarto del baño. Uh, the bathroom. In the country, 30 minutes, and already I speak the language. Muy bueno, señor. Muchísimas gracias, señor. I am Luis, señor. And if I can be a further service? Well, as a matter of fact, I need a car. Does the hotel have a rental agency? Oh, si, sí, señor. You want to get your good car? Just as long as it runs. Oh, si, sí, señor. I know all about automobiles. Maybe something else you want, senor? Uh, yes. Do you know where Avenida del Mar is? Si, Avenida del Mar is to the south about 15 kilometers by car from hotel. You see sign. Good. You get me the car. Si, senor, right away. 541 Avenida del Mar. 541 is where Senora Spence lives. Oh, do you know her? Oh, si, Senora Spence is beautiful, widow. Her husband was great race driver. He won last year's race in Mexico City. Yeah, uh... How about a bottle of scotch and some ice? Si, senor. I think you have good time in Acapulco, senor. Thanks, Luis. Operator, can you get me Mrs. Spence at 541 Avenida Del Mar? No, I'll wait. I'm an attorney from Los Angeles. May I speak to Mrs. Sabina Spence, please? Well, um, could you tell me what it's about? I'm her brother-in-law, Jay Flagg. Well, I'm afraid I have to discuss this with Mrs. Spence personally. I'm in Acapulco. I'd be happy to meet with her at her convenience. I might be able to arrange it if you could tell me what it's about. I represent her mother-in-law, Mrs. Leonora Spence. Well, um, in that case, suppose you drop by here around 4.30? Be happy to. Thank you. Morgan. Preston Morgan. Well, I don't know about the others, but this is my idea of a real tourist attraction. You know, it's a nice feeling being a part of this family. Family's very important, especially at a time like this. I know how busy you both have been with the club and the act, and I appreciate your coming down here. 
What do you talk like that for? You know I'll always be with you when you need me. Yes, but I wish we could be together all the time. It's been lonely these past years, darling. I missed having you around. I know what you mean. We missed you too, didn't we, Jay? Sure, kid. Frankly, I don't know how we got along without you. Oh, thanks, brother-in-law. Me too, me too. You especially, Mr. Billy Spence. Perdóname, señora. Shall I leave the flowers here? Oh, they're lovely, Manuel. Yes, please. I'll take them in the house later. You know, Manuel, if anybody could make money grow on trees, you'd be the one. Gracias, señora. Flowers grow easy here. Money, not so easy. I thought you and Billy were going to the beach today. Si, señora. We go now. Off you go, young man. Be careful now. Don't worry, senora. I watch him good. Sabina, somehow I never thought of you as a mother. I've got to hand it to you. You're doing a good job. Doll will surprise you someday, too. Of course, we haven't tried the family roots yet. I've managed a few surprises for him, haven't I, Jay, darling? Yeah. You're a scream, darling. What's eating you? Speaking of food, I think it's about time for some liquid refreshment. And if these flowers could talk, I think they'd say the same thing, young lady. <laughs> That's right. But theirs is a necessity. After some of your sister's so-called surprises, mine is too. <laughs> Come on, Dara, mix us a drink. Can't he do anything for himself? Well, well, here we are at home with the celebrated Corwin sisters. You know, there never has been a duel like you two. It's been so long, I'm afraid we're the only ones who remember. Dara, hurry up with that drink, will you? I'm dying. Now, come on, Sabina, you know you were good. If you hadn't married Spence and broken up the act, you'd be doing great on the nightclub circuit by now. Well, from what you say, Dara will make it on her own. She doesn't need my help. Oh, Dara's doing fine. She'll make it okay. But why limit yourself to one beauty when you can have two? Right? Yeah. Besides, Daryl always said the act was more fun as a double, didn't you, sweetheart? I guess so. You know, I always somehow thought you'd come back to the act. After all, being a housewife isn't the most exciting thing in the world, you know. Especially after what you and Dara had. Robbie'd never let me go back to show business. But I don't see how you can just give it up, just like that. Didn't you ever get a yen to go back in the business? Oh, I used to. But after five years, I wouldn't even try. Why not? All you need is a little rehearsal, right, Dara? I suppose so. If she wants to. If she wants to? What do you mean, if she wants to? Of course she wants to. Oh, I didn't say that, Jay. I've got it. I've got it. It's a natural. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll open our own nightclub right here in Acapulco, the greatest spot on the continent. We'll build a... We'll build a nightclub that'll outshine them all. We'll keep it all in the family. Run our own little business and everybody will be happy. Now, how does that sound? That sounds like a good idea. Could you? Why not? What's to keep us from it? Money. Money. Oh, that reminds me. You got a telephone call this afternoon from a Mr. Preston Morgan, an attorney from Los Angeles. He represents Mrs. Leonora Spence. Really? I wonder what she wants. Did he say anything? Only that he'd stop by at 4.30 today. I think you're going to find yourself looking at a nice big hunk of cash. I don't think so. Why not? She's loaded. She never gave us anything before. When she heard we were married, she cut Robbie off without a cent. Why should she give me anything now? Well, maybe she doesn't feel that way anymore because of the accident. Besides, Sabina, you were pretty smart to have that baby, you know. What do you mean? Well, all the old ladies got is a lot of corporations. You've got her only real, live, flesh and blood grandchild, and that's it. That's right. That's the end of the line for the Spence family. And anyway, with all the money she gives to charity, why not to her own grandchild? Well, I suppose she could. Well, wouldn't that be wonderful? Wonderful? It'd be the greatest. You loan me the cash, we open up the club, and we're in business. Oh, you wouldn't have to loan me all of it, just a small part of it. And I could go to any bank and get the balance just on the reputation of the Corwin sisters. I tell you, Sabino, you don't know what we got here. I can just see it now. The Corwin sisters, back together for the first time in five years. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jay. I'm afraid you misunderstood. I didn't say I'd go back to the act. Now, don't get worried. You'll be great. 
Carol will get you back in trim. I'm not going back to the act. I know how you feel, kids. You're a little scared and a little nervous. Stop it and listen to me. I'm not scared and I'm not nervous. And I have no intention of going back to the act. All right, tell me. Why not? Because I don't want to have any part of that life ever again. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're a lot of help. <laughs> Spence? No, I'm your twin sister, Dara. And I'm the lucky husband, Jay Flagg. Oh, yes, we spoke earlier. Sabine will be out in a minute, but uh, in the meantime, if my husband will fix us a drink, I'll entertain you. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Excuse me, I'll make a drink. <laughs> I'm a professional entertainer, but my husband's insanely jealous. Isn't that sweet? Is this your uh, first trip to Acapulco, Mr. Morgan? As a matter of fact, it's my first trip out of the state of California in three years. You stay in one place all the time? Well, my offices are in Los Angeles. Oh. Don't you like to travel? Uh, it's just that I never seem to find time to get away. Maybe what you need is an incentive. Acapulco can be lots of fun. Well, I understand the weather's pretty perfect down here. Perfect. Salute. Salud. Salud. What sort of uh, settlement does Leonora have in mind? Settlement? Oh, well, she didn't send you down here just for us to get acquainted. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'll wait and talk to your sister. Doesn't matter. I'll find out from Sabina anyway. Find out what? Oh, here we are. Sabina, this is Mr. Preston Morgan. Mr. Morgan? Mr. Morgan, this is Sabina Spence. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? You want a drink, Sabina? Oh, no, thanks. I'm very anxious to hear what Mr. Morgan has to say. Amazing, isn't it? What? How two girls can look so much alike. Except for the hair, of course. It has to be seen to be believed. Yes, it does. Would you mind if we talked about this somewhere uh, alone? Oh, do you want us to, uh... Oh, no, no. Shall we talk on the patio? Fine, thank you. How do you like that? With all her talk about family. How come she wouldn't want us to listen? I'll tell you why. Because you are very stupid. Look who's calling who stupid. What was the idea of bringing up the settlement? Well, that's what he came here to talk about, wasn't it? Is your name Sabina Spence? I'll tell you one thing. If it were, I wouldn't have to worry about working in strip joints to pay off your bills. Whose bills? Your bills, sweetheart. Your bills. And where did I get those bills? Oh, boy, that's what I'd like to know. Oh, you'd like to know, huh? Well, I'll give you a clue. Trying to keep a club open with a flop star attraction can be very expensive, sweetheart. I told you I was no stripper. You were so right. Well, what's the idea of bringing up the Corwin sisters? That's different. It's a dance act and includes Sabina. Without Sabina, you are nothing. Well, and if you're so smart, how come you had to go into bankruptcy? I told you, you were very stupid. Jay, if I thought you meant that... Oh, don't doubt it for a minute, sweetheart. I do mean it. Now, well, get over there and listen. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous? A half million dollars any way you want it? Cash, securities, assured income, trust fund? Yes, and that's why this is the most inhuman contract I've ever heard of. She may be a very wealthy woman, but there's one thing her money can't buy, and that's my son. 
Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. That's not your daddy. Well, if I were going to be a daddy, I wouldn't mind being yours. Billy! Oh. Senora, excuse please. Billy sees sports car outside. That's why he thinks maybe... Oh, it's uh, the car I rented at the hotel. It's all right, Manuel. Billy, this is Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan dropped by to see Mummy about some business, so you run along now with Manuel. I'm sorry. He seems like a wonderful little boy. He is a wonderful little boy. And you can go back and tell Mrs. Leonora Spence that he's not for sale. Not at any price. I understand. But you'll excuse me if I press this a little bit further. My mind is made up, Mr. Morgan. Well, for my satisfaction and that of my clients, I'd like to clarify that... There's nothing to clarify. She's willing to give me $500,000 in exchange for my son. It's as simple as that. Mrs. Spence, your mother-in-law heads one of the largest industrial corporations in the country. That makes her a very powerful woman. She's in a position to make or get anything she wants. Are you threatening me? No, I'm not. Nor was I commissioned to go beyond what we've already discussed. But I want you to realize, I don't think she'll accept your decision. Well, she'll never take Billy away from me, and you can tell her that. Then think of it from Billy's angle. With his grandmother, there's nothing in the world he couldn't have. Except his mother. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Flagg will show you to the door. Good day, Mrs. Spence. Goodbye, Mr. Morgan. All finished, Mr. Morgan? That's precisely my position. Good day. Oh, Mr. Morgan. I managed to overhear your talk with my sister. She isn't very bright when it comes to business, is she, Jay? No, but you are, darling. Well, I think old lady Spence is 100% right. She ought to buy the kid and bring him up in her own class. You know what I mean? It's a different world. And that's where Billy belongs. After all, what could Sabina do for him? Well, apparently your sister doesn't feel as you do. Well, naturally. She's still in a state of shock. Well, after all, she just lost her husband. You give her a couple of months of living down here all by herself, and she'll be dying to get back to some life. And Billy will just be in her way. Oh, now, don't get me wrong. I, I'm just crazy about the kids, you understand. Well, you know, after all, when you work in a nightclub, you... Isn't that right, Jay? You should know she's your sister. That's right. And I know her better than anybody. What are you suggesting, Mrs. Flagg? Um, uh, why don't you have another drink? No, thanks. Well, I'm, uh, I'm just suggesting that, well, maybe you shouldn't go back to Los Angeles just yet. Maybe you ought to stick around a little longer. What my wife is trying to say that your offer came as somewhat of a shock, and your approach wasn't the most tactful. Now, I, uh, we think that uh, Sabina shouldn't make such a serious decision until she's had time to think it over. Is that what you're trying to say, Mrs. Flagg? Well, kind of, except that it wasn't your fault. I think you were very tactful, Mr. Morgan. It's just that she didn't expect to hear what you had to say, that's all. All right. How much time do you need? You will hear from us tomorrow. I'm staying at the Hotel Encanto. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, you did a good job. For once. Hi, Billy. My name's Press. What's the matter? You like the car? Yes. Can I go for a ride? Well, how about a ride around the block? Right now? Right now. Here we go. Billy! Hey, mister. What you do with Billy? Are you talking to me? You take Billy out of car in pronto. Come, Billy. You're not allowed in strange car. I want to ride first. Well, Billy, maybe your mother will take you for a ride later. I don't want to ride in her car. I want to ride in this car. Take you for a ride later. You come with Manuel no, now. I come, ride Billy. In this car you now. you come with Manuel. Billy, what's the matter? I'm sorry, Mrs. Spence. It's all my fault. Billy asked to go for a ride, and I didn't see any harm in it. We're just going around the block, but your man here says... Senora, tell me I no let Billy go with no stranger. That's right, Manuel. I wouldn't consider Mr. Morgan a stranger, Manuel. After all, he has been in the house. It was just a misunderstanding. I'm sorry, Mr. Morgan. I'm sorry. I aroused the family. Another time, Billy. Goodbye.
shouldn't have been so abrupt with him, Sabino. Remember, he may turn out to be your bread and butter. You're wrong, Jay. I don't want to have anything to do with him or what he represents. Senora, I'm sorry if I caused trouble. There's nothing to be sorry about, Manuel. I'm grateful that you're so concerned about Billy. Now, don't be so dramatic. You make it sound as though he were trying to steal a kid. Well, that was his purpose in coming here, to take Billy away from me. After this, I won't rest until Mr. Morgan is out of Acapulco. Come on, Billy. Stop that confounded pacing. I'm trying to think of what to do. There's only one thing you can do. Oh, no, Jay. I'm not going to tell her. Oh, you'll tell her all right. You'll tell her everything, including what a lousy stripper you are. I can't. Don't go getting religious on me. The smell of that long green stuff makes me impatient. Oh, but, Jay, darling, listen. Now. Oh, now. all right. Hello, operator. I want Hank Gordon in Los Angeles. Park, O oh, three 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 two. No, I'll wait. Does the name Whistler, Morgan, and Scott mean anything to you? No. Remember that lawyer who bailed us out when we got raided a couple of years ago? Oh yeah, Whistler. He was the syndicate's mouthpiece. Well, there was a lawyer named Morgan. It was his partner. Now there are a lot of Morgans around, but how many Preston Morgans? Well, hello, Hank. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, this is Jay. Oh, it is great. Look, I want you to do a little background work for me. Savina, can I come in? I want to talk to you. Of course, come in. Going out? Oh, yes, I told Mrs. Alvarez I'd help her with a luncheon party for tomorrow. Then you're going to the party. Mm-hmm. I'm glad. It'll do you good to get out more often. Mr. Morgan got me so upset, I thought a hot shower might relax me. Really wasn't his fault, you know. Did he tell you to try to change my mind? You're awful jumpy, honey. He didn't say anything. Oh? Well, except that you'd said no. I don't want him in this house again. Tell that to Jay. Golly, Sabina, do you know what you're doing? 500,000 is half a million dollars. I thought you said he didn't say anything. Well, he didn't, but I eavesdropped. Mm -hmm. You haven't changed, have you? Look, I didn't come in here to talk about me. Well, I hope you didn't come here to talk about Mr. Morgan. Honey, I can't let you do this. You're giving up a fortune. I'm not giving up my son, Dara. Well, then what are you going to do with him? You don't have a husband. You don't have any money. You think men like to marry women with other men's children? I don't plan on remarrying. Well, and that's even worse. And you'll have to go back to work. And what are you going to do with a kid? Boy, that old lady will get custody of him like that, and you won't get a cent. It's none of your business, and I don't want to talk about it. Ed, you're going to talk about it. Why don't you stop thinking about yourself all the time? Try thinking about somebody else for a change. Like you, for instance. All right, why not? Listen, Sabina, these past five years have taught me some pretty hard facts. Oh, sure, it was easy for you. You landed a millionaire and walked out on the act. But did you ever stop to think about what happened to me? Having to work in cheap, smelly clubs till 2 o'clock in the morning, trying to build a single all by myself? Why do you think I married Jay? Because I loved him? He was the only one that didn't smell a cheap whiskey. He's got a successful nightclub? Jay went into bankruptcy six weeks ago. What? Yeah. And you remember him talking about that Bubbles Reed, that, that stripper that put him in the red? Well, I'm Bubbles Reed. You? Yes. Why? I had to work night and day to pay for my charming husband's so-called good taste. I'm telling you, it's been rough. But you don't know how rough. That's why I can't let you do this. I can't let you turn down this offer. I'll do whatever I can for you, Dara, but not with Leonora Spence's money. Half a million bucks, Sabina. Just... Just think what you can do with that kind of money. For you and for us. Why, Jay can build another nightclub. Stop it, Dara. You haven't changed at all, have you? You're still this selfish, conniving, what do I get out of it, Dara? Well, you can leave any time, because there's nothing here for you. Nothing at all. Let's 
mistaken, sister dear. You ought to know me better than that. I never let go of a good thing. Ah, gracias, señora. Sus órdenes. Ah, señor Morgan, you want car? Yes, I thought I'd take a ride, see some of your beautiful Acapulco. Oh, señor, but it is better if you like to take boat ride. Boat starts from pier and goes around Little Bay to Little Island, then come back. Later, when it gets dark, you see many, many lights, very nice. Very much as you say, full of color. Well, you got me such a great car, I think I'll try the highway first. Oh, it's very nice right along highway, too. I get your map, señor. Uno momento. I might bring it to Rome. Now that's enough, Luis. Thanks. I'll be all right now. Better you stay inside, Senor Morgan, and sleep tonight. You see nightlife mañana. I think you're right. If Senor wishes, Maybe I could get free time tomorrow and be guide to Senor. There's many beautiful places to see in Acapulco. El Mercado is beautiful market. The bull ring is una corrida muy brava. You no like? No, it's fine. Then the fishing, uh, school for water ski. Also beautiful places to dance and to drink. Luis, I'm here on business. Si, sí, Senor, I understand. But one thing the senor must see is no place else in the whole world. High divers from Cliff at Hotel La Fonda. Yeah, I've, I've heard about that. Me, I am also high diver. You can see me when day after tomorrow. I dive at big party of senor y senor Alvarez. All right. If I can, I'll try to make it. Quien es? El teniente de la policía. I am Lieutenant Reyes of the Acapulco Police. Senor Morgan? How do you do? Have a seat? Gracias. Can I offer you a drink? No, gracias. We understand you were attacked by Manuel Lopez. I've come for your statement. Yes, well, he seemed to have been waiting for me. When I was about to enter the car, he jumped me. Do you have any idea why Lopez attacked you? Oh, I suppose he mistook me for someone else. I understand you are visiting Senora Spence. Yes, I've called on her for business purposes. I'm an attorney. And what is the nature of your business, Senor? It's private. It must be kept confidential. Your pardon, Senor. But a matter which results in assault in a public place is no longer private. I'm sorry I can't accommodate you, Lieutenant Reyes. But I must claim legal privileges to keep my interests confidential. I see. Senor Morgan, would you be good enough to be at the police station at 10 o'clock in the morning? In the meantime, Manuel Lopez will be kept in jail and we will hear his side of the story. Then you will be free to decide whether or not you will press charges against him. Oh, well, as far as I'm concerned, I'd just as soon forget the whole incident. Well, unfortunately, we cannot do this. You are an American visitor and we must make an official record of your statement. Your cooperation will be appreciated, senor. Buenas noches. Another whiskey soda, senor? Better make it a double bromo this time, Luis. I feel a giant-sized headache coming on. Well, Mrs. 
suspense. What a surprise. Good morning. How are you feeling? Well, a little mangled. I'm sorry you had to be brought into this. Uh, may we sit down? Thank you. I came here voluntarily. I felt responsible for Manuel's actions yesterday. Well, you have a real protector in Manuel. Yes, I know. He was Robbie's mechanic in Mexico City, and after the accident, why, he stayed on with us. Now I don't know what I'd do without him. Well, I certainly have no intention of signing a complaint. As a matter of fact, if Lieutenant Reyes hadn't been so conscientious about his job, the whole thing would have been forgotten yesterday. That's very kind of you. Uh, Mrs. Spence, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Yes. I'd like to talk to you once more. If it's about Billy, I'm afraid my mind is made up. Your mother-in-law has an entirely different opinion of you. Now, if I could uh, give her my impression, there might be a chance of working something out. All right. Billy and I are going on a beach picnic this afternoon. Would you like to join us? I'd love it. Meet us at the house at noon. At the house? Is it safe? <laughs> I'll warn Manuel beforehand. <laughs> like to see Lieutenant Reyes. American in Acapulco fracas. Preston Morgan, Los Angeles attorney, was attacked yesterday in the parking lot of the Hotel Encanto. He should have been smart enough to avoid publicity. Now we stand the risk of reporters getting curious about his business. I'm very much worried about this young Mr. Morgan. You may be worried about nothing. Well, this transaction can mean a lot of money to him. Well, we'll find out as soon as... We... Hello? Hotel Encanto? Mr. Preston Morgan's room, please. Hello? Yes, this is Preston Morgan. Oh, hello, Mr. Fletcher. I'm just fine, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Spence was just anxious to find out how you're getting along. Well, it's too early to tell, and it's going to take longer than we thought, but... Press, what progress are you making? I've seen her, and I'm going to see her again today. Anything happened that we ought to know about? Anything, uh, special? No, nothing to be concerned about. When I get something tangible, I'll get back to you. All right, Press. We'll be expecting to hear from you as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Not a word about the fight. I don't like it. He's obviously holding something back. Whatever went on down there must have had something to do with our case. Thorne, we're going to Acapulco ourselves. Oh, now, Leonora, I don't think that'll be necessary. Now, don't contradict me. Get me two reservations on the first plane to Acapulco tomorrow morning. And cancel all my appointments for the next two days. Oh, Thorne, you know I can't stand cigar smoke. There, now, this is the moat. Alligators and snakes and reptiles. That'll keep the king safe, huh? And this is the drawbridge. There. How's that? Mommy, Mommy, look what we builded. Oh, my, what a beautiful castle. I'm afraid when the tide comes in, you're going to have a war on your hands. Oh, then we'd better round up the soldiers, Billy. Those soldiers, this castle got muchachos. Where are they? We've got to be prepared. Over there, sleeping. Siesta. You'd better wake them up. We've got no time to lose. Hurry. <laughs> he likes you. Oh, you have a very happy, well-adjusted boy. He likes everybody. Yes, but you've got a nice way with him. Like his daddy used to have. Does he miss him very much? No, I don't think so. Robbie was away most of the time. I imagine he thinks he's just on another trip. Away, you, you mean racing? Yes. I used to go with him at first, but after he had a few accidents, I couldn't bear to watch him anymore. I thought that if I didn't go along, I, that would stop him racing, but it didn't. Well, I, I 
guess racing is like an addiction. Yes, it is. Well, what's wrong with this picnic anyways? Let's have some lunch. That's a good idea. Yeah. I had a hunch it was something about that guy. Thanks, Hank. I'll be glad to reciprocate at any time. I never saw you look so happy. Who died? Darrell, there are times when even your ridiculous sense of humor sounds like a sense of humor. I can tell. What do you have to say? We're going to collect that 500 grand. I wouldn't count on it. Sabina can be pretty stubborn. Who said anything about Sabina? How are you going to do it without her? Wouldn't you like to collect that money instead of Sabina? You mean without her agreeing to the settlement? With Mr. Preston Morgan's help, it might be arranged. Oh. Now, you just keep working on Sabina and leave the rest to me. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Happy days. Ah, what a great picnic. This alone has made the trip down worthwhile. You're on an expense account, aren't you? Yes, but that's nothing compared to the fee I would have collected had you accepted Leonora's offer. Then I'm sorry for your sake. Can I tell you something in confidence? Mm -hmm. I'm not sorry at all. I think if I'd have collected that money, you and Billy would have been on my conscience the rest of my life. Do you really mean that? Some businessman, huh? Just awful. You know, it's too bad old Mrs. Spence can't meet you. She'd sure be in for a great surprise. Robbie wanted us to meet and like each other. Right after the wedding, she cut us off entirely. But not financially. Oh, yes. Why are you so surprised? Well, I naturally thought that... That I married Robbie for his money. Well, it wouldn't be hard to take. I know that's what she thought. I just know she'd like you. That's all Robbie ever wanted, really. But now it's too late, and as far as I'm concerned, I just don't care. Well, what are you going to do now? Stay here in Acapulco? I'll probably have to move somewhere where I can work. Well, what about you, now that you've almost had a fortune? Maybe I wouldn't have gotten to Acapulco otherwise. And I met you. That restored my faith in us humans. It's all been worthwhile. I wish it could have been under different circumstances. Maybe someday it will be? I'd like that. Let's go home, Mommy. <laughs> All right, Billy. It's a good idea. Thank you. Sabina. Mm -hmm. You should always keep in mind that whatever you do, old Mrs. Spence will be watching. I think she'll fight you for the custody of Billy. I'm not afraid. I know where I can find a good lawyer. <laughs> Mom, Billy, help us pick up the things. That's it. Thank you, she's. Just right. Thank you. Well. It's his flag. Why is a handsome man like you drinking alone in Acapulco? Now you know I'm here on business. <laughs> business couldn't occupy all your time. Why don't you invite me to sit up? Uh, pardon me. Yes, please. What would you like to drink? That looks interesting. Any rum in it? Some. Same. And heavy on the rum. Well, how can a husband let a lovely creature like you out of his sight? Think I'm lovely? You're Sabina's twin. You're both very beautiful. I understand you spent this afternoon on the beach with her. Yes, I did. Make any headway? None at all. You're not very forceful. Well, I think Sabina's made up her mind. Frankly, I admire her for it. A lot of things have happened to you. Fight with Manuel, a police investigation, picnic at the beach. Now you're forgetting your mission. Well, you're certainly keeping track of me. Mm -hmm. I certainly am. 
After all, we have the same interests. Have we? You want Sabina to sign that contract as much as I do. True, if she signs, I collect a pretty good fee. But Sabina said no, that's that. Well, Jay and I had a talk with her, and we feel there's a possibility she might change her mind. I can hardly believe that. Not after what she told me on the beach. Don't worry about her. You let Jay and me handle it. How much do you figure you and Jay get out of this if she signs? Like I said before, this deal means as much to me as it does to you. How long do you think it'll take? Another day or so. After all, it's your job to stay on until all the possibilities have been exploited, isn't it? I'll be here. Good. Now, why don't you let me show you the town? Now, wait a minute. You told me your husband was insanely jealous, remember? <laughs> don't let that bother you. No, no. Something tells me we keep this strictly business. You don't know what you're missing. Morgan, I have good news for you. Sabina's changed her mind. She's agreed to sign the papers. Really? Well, I'll be right over then. No, you'd better make it after lunch. Why wait till then? It's pretty important. It might be best to get it over with. Sabina's gone out. She wanted to spend the morning with Billy. She asked that you be here at 2. I'll see you at 2 then. <laughs> Now, Sabina, you just forget everything and concentrate on having a good time. I wish you and Dara would change your minds and come along with me. The Alvarez parties were always wonderful. Besides, you haven't seen the High Divers. No, thanks. We've already seen them in the movie. I think we'll stay here and have a light lunch. <laughs> now, don't you rush right home. No, I won't. But I won't be late either. Have fun. Thank you, Jim. Bring my hat, will you? You'd better get ready. Don't worry about me, Jay, darling. I'm gonna love this part of it. Yeah, just don't overdo it. I'll be back in an hour.
time, Mr. Morgan. I'm always on time when it comes to business. You're familiar with the contents. Mm -hmm. You'll just sign here. Just to satisfy my curiosity, how did Dara get you to change your mind? She made me see how wrong I was. After all, as a mother, my first concern is for my son's future. I couldn't deprive him of what his grandmother could give him. I don't suppose the half million had any influence in your decision. Of course not. I'm not thinking of myself, I'm thinking of Billy. Why do you look so glum? Now you'll collect your fee. That's right. I can find my own way out, Mrs. Spence. Goodbye. Good afternoon. You missed my big, beautiful dive. Oh, I'm sorry, Luis. I had some business with Mrs. Spence. Ah, then why were you not at the Alvarez party? You could have seen Senora Spence and watched my beautiful dive. Oh, uh, you're mistaken. Uh, I just left Mrs. Spence. She's at home. Oh, no, senor. I don't make mistake, I'm beautiful lady. Mrs. Spence be at Alvarez party. She watched me dive. Are you sure? Seguro que si. Should have known. everything. There's a limousine reserved for Mrs. Spence. Senora Spence? Yes? I've been waiting for you. Lieutenant Ray is from the police. Would you kindly follow me to the airport office? There is something important I have to discuss with you. Oh, very well. Uh, this is Mr. Fletcher. Which was Lieutenant, how about customs? I'll take care of it. Muchacho, toma el boleto. If you please. And is, is how can you possibly expect to get away with it? Get away with it? It'll be so simple for your sister to prove her signature was forged. Are you that anxious to go to jail? I should have known better than to try and fool you, Press. But I can promise you that those documents will never be questioned. That's right, unless you want to go to jail. Oh, come on and sit down. Only one other person besides you and me can call those signatures forgeries. Your sister. And she won't, because she'll never know. What are you talking about? I intend to wait right here and tell her. Oh. oh, well, we're going to have a long time to get very well acquainted, because she isn't coming home, ever. You'd better explain that, Mrs. Flagg. Well, shortly after Sabina leaves the Alvarez party, there'll be a little accident on a cliff road. <laughs> Nobody's going to question that either. Your own sister? I told you how much money meant to me. And you need some of it just as bad as I do. What are you going to do? I'm going to call the police. 
Now, that's not wise at all, Mr. Morgan. Things have gone too far for that. You can't stop it now. I can make sure you don't get away with it. You know, with your reputation, it'd be wise for you to stay out of this and keep quiet. You'll get your commission, the clients will get the kid, and we'll get what we want. You haven't got it yet. Hotel of Honda, por favor. You shouldn't do that. It's just a waste of time. We'll see. Hello. I'd like to talk to Sabina Spence. She's with the Alvarez party. She's already left. How long ago? Thank you. Remember, Morgan, we have a perfect alibi and you don't. When we tell the police that you failed in every effort to get Sabina to sign the papers, and when Manuel testifies that you tried to kidnap Billy, I don't think it'll be difficult at all to pin Sabina's death on you. Not if she's still alive. Good luck. the road. And the driver? No chance at all. The car turned over, exploded it, and burned. Who was driving? Senora Sabina Spence. This is her bag. You don't seem surprised, senor. What? How do you arrive here so quickly, so soon after the accident? Well, I was coming to meet her. She had already left the party. For what reason? Why did you wish to see her? It really doesn't matter now. Seems to be perfectly in order. There's no doubt about it, Leonora. Billy is yours. You did a good job for us, Press. I'll admit that after the phone conversation, we had some reservations. As a matter of fact, that's why we came down here. But isn't it fortunate he got her to sign this before the accident? How soon can I take the boy, Thorne? Well, sometime today, I'd imagine. Would your police have any objections, Lieutenant Reyes? Since the custody papers are in order, none whatever. There you are, Leonora. Where is my grandson? I'll get him for you. Something bothering you, Press? No. You don't seem very pleased. Well, I guess it's just the accident. It was too bad. Come here, Billy. Come to your grandmother. Oh. Uh, look, I don't know whether this is the time to mention it or not, but... Uh... Mention what? Well, the paper said something about a settlement. And since I'm my sister's heir, I... Are you your sister's heir? Certainly I am. When we were in act, we made out wills in favor of each other. Mr. Fletcher will handle it. Come, Billy, you and I will go into the garden. Wait, Mrs. Spence. Something the matter? Everything. This whole thing's illegal. Those papers are forgeries. What are you saying? I'm saying Sabina didn't sign them. Her sister did. Oh, that's ridiculous. That should not be difficult to prove or disprove for a handwriting expert. Are you trying to cut your own throat, Press? Or isn't $50,000 enough? I've had enough of the ragged edge of the law. I can't spend the rest of my life there. What is he talking about? Not even for $50,000. I can't stand by and see someone get away with murder. Can you prove these accusations, Mr. Morgan? I will. And I accuse you and your wife of murdering Sabina. Me murder my own sister? Oh, don't you see what he's trying to do? He tried everything he could think of to make Sabina sign those papers. He even threatened her. Well, he's the one with the motive, with everything to gain. Except for the half million dollars you stand to gain. Oh, 
Well, I love my sister. What you say is logical, even plausible, Senora. I knew you'd believe me. But I don't believe you, Senora. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, it would have been impossible for Senor Morgan to have brought about your sister's death. What do you mean? Senor Morgan was nowhere within miles of your sister or her car the afternoon of the accident. Manuel? Manuel observed Senor Flag tampering with your sister's car in the parking lot of the Hotel La Fonda. He's lying. Manuel and Morgan were in this together. That's not true. Teniente, usted sabe... Senor and Senora Flagg, I hereby arrest you for the attempted murder. Attempted murder? But they did. Not quite, Senor. Mommy, 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 mommy. Billy. Mommy. Oh. Senora, but I must get back to my desk now. Lieutenant, I'm very much obliged to you and your staff for your efficient cooperation and in helping me avoid unfavorable publicity. A pleasure, Senora. With the help of Manuel, it made our work easier. And now, I hope you will all enjoy your visit in Acapulco. Buenos dias. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't it ironic, Press, that if you hadn't made the newspapers with your fight with Manuel, we never would have come down here. And my accident wouldn't have been staged. It would have been a real one. Why did you fake the accident? Why push Sabina's car off the road, have her hide out pretending to be dead when all the time you knew it was Jay that had tampered with the car? We had to be sure it was Dara and Jay without you. That they and you hadn't conspired together. And if it weren't for my sudden attack of acute conscience, if I hadn't blown the whistle on the flags, you would have yourselves. On you, too. Oh, let's not think about that. Everything's turned out beautifully. I'm not only getting a grandson, but also a daughter-in-law as well. Oh, yes. We've had a few hours together. And now that I've gotten to really know her, I've changed my mind. Well, it's my prerogative. I like her. So the only loser in all this is Preston Morgan. That's right. I can't accept a contingent fee for something I didn't do. No, you can't. But you might consider a partnership in my firm. I'm always looking for young men of integrity who are willing to risk a murder charge rather than be dishonest. Do you mean that, sir? I certainly do. You come and see me after you've helped Sabina close the house and the three of you get back to Los Angeles. That won't take long, will it, Sabina? Give us a week or so. Oh, go ahead, have your cigar. <laughs>